Hey everyone, I want to thank you for watching my videos in their entirety. Hopefully you're learning something and hopefully you're appreciating the new info on Stan that's been released. Oh, let's drop the board. Now, uh, today we're going to be discussing the variable pulse frequency generator, which was on the GMS unit. And while this uh, next series of videos is going to be going over the VIC circuit card specifically, this uh, indirectly influenced their operations. Now, this circuit is a master clock for the other stages of the GMS and their processing, we'll call it. It's important for you to know that the GMS at Stan's time was essentially an analog computer, and the buggy at that stage was more or less a mobile laboratory for data collection. We're going to get into this, and we're going to show uh, some discrepancies between Stan's literary claim, which I don't think was intentional, but uh, we'll clarify some of that, so let's get into it. We're going to look at the variable pulse frequency generator. This circuit was a 50% duty cycle generator. 50% came from different stages of divide by 10 ICs. Selectability was performed by rotary switches. And the circuit is effectively being used as a master clock, similar to modern computers, for the other processing circuitry on the GMS unit. This is a location of the circuit on the GMS unit. We can see from the interface plate that we have frequency selection switches for the water, which is actually the gated pulse frequency generator, distributor and accelerator, and then there's an auxiliary. This is the original circuit board front or top. And this is the original circuit board back or rear. This is the schematic as outlined in the international patent referenced above on the top right corner. Essentially what we have is a variable resistor network for each channel. We have a fixed 1K resistor and a fixed 10 nanofarad capacitor. These determine the frequency of the 555, which is communicated to each division stage, having frequency selectivity via the rotary switches, which then go to the input of a hex inverter, having polarity reversed 180 degrees out to other circuits. The 555 has two independent selectable via the switch, either gas or hydrogen is assumed here. Channel A and channel B have the exact same uh, component values, and they're basically forming an adjustable RC time constant network in conjunction with the fixed 1K and 10 nanofarad capacitor. The maximum resistance can be determined by the series summation of the potentiometer and the two resistors, which works out to 109.4 kilo ohms. This total in series with the constant 1K in capacitor produces a frequency of 1.29 kilohertz. The highest frequency range is assumed by reducing the potentiometer down to 100 ohms, which would represent the low end of the range of the potentiometer, adding that to the 9.4 summation between the two 4.7 series resistors, we come out to approximated 9.5 kilo ohms. And while still in series with the fixed 1K and 10 nanofarad capacitor, the frequency comes out to 12.5 kilohertz. Now each divide by 10 is performed by a 7490 Decade counter IC, we can see here that there's a 1 tenth, 1 1 hundredth, and 1 1 thousandth division stage. As an example, the fundamental frequency of 1000 hertz to be applied divided by 10 by the first stage would output 100 hertz. The 1 1 hundredth stage would output 10 hertz, and the 1 1 thousandth stage would output 1 hertz. We can see the frequency stage comparison here. The fundamental frequency, which is duty cycle, is not 50%. But after going through each 7490 stage, we can see a fixed 50% duty cycle being produced. 
So this is the fundamental, this is the divide by 10, divide by 100, divide by 1000. Each frequency selection switch is connected to a single input of the hex inverter. In this case, the hex inverter is a 7404, or more modern would be the 74LS04. This causes a polarity inversion of 180 degree to the input frequency. It also provides some buffering. And the outputs go to the other circuit stages, which will be expanded upon in other videos. One thing that we need to note here is Stan's literary reference to what is highlighted, that the pulse frequency range of each clock signal can be altered or changed independently of each other. This unfortunately is misleading, though I don't believe it's intentional. It is not independently adjustable between all four separate channels due to the fact that they are tied to the fundamental provided by the 555. For example, if we were to adjust the frequency select here via this potentiometer, as we vary the frequency, this will change in proportion to the change of the potentiometer. However, because all of these are tied to the fundamental frequency, they will also adjust accordingly. We cannot really adjust each channel independently because they are all tied back to the fundamental provided by the 555. So at this point, I just wanted to clarify that before moving forward. All right, that's the end of the presentation. So let's go out to the lab and show it on the bench. All right, this is a circuit. As we can see here, this, uh, visual LED showing the pulse rate. Of course, if I change the pulse rate, it goes up and it goes down. Now this is not a precision potentiometer. This is just an example potentiometer here. But these are the frequency selection switches, which are tied to each division stage. And then, of course, the fundamental. And then whichever one you select out of these four goes into a hex inverter, which inverts the polarity. So now we're going to go to the scope, and I'm going to show you the differences in the waveforms. And then we'll show an example of frequency selection and adjustment. All right, this is an example of the frequencies on each channel. We have the fundamental, which does not have... If we zoom in, does not have a duty cycle of 50% as seen. It's pretty much 99.1. So the 50% is coming from the uh, series of decade dividers, which we see here. Let's bring that out a little more. Okay. Now we can see here. Channel one, two, three, four. So watch channel four. Sorry. So here I'm going to show you a change in frequency. Watch the bottom. Channel four. And then we can adjust this in a linear manner. So that's increasing the frequency based on the selection. That's increasing the frequency based on the selection of the actual division. And as you can see, we adjust it. You can also see here that between the example of channel three, the magenta and the dark blue at the bottom, that the phase is inverted. So we're going through the inverter on channel four. Now this frequency or this clock train is not uh, independently variable. So for example, if I select, as we've seen here, if I go up in frequency, and let's say I want to adjust according to Stan, where he says each channel is independently variable, that's actually false. Because if I adjust the frequency, the other ones adjust accordingly. And the reason being is because they are all tied to the fundamental. As I'm decreasing the frequency on channel four, frequency on channel three, is decreasing proportionately and multiples of the division that's selected so this is but it's the variable pulse frequency generator on the GMS which is essentially as I said before the master clock for the rest of the so-called processing of the other electronic stages as always thanks for watching till next time